after beating Persona 5 Tactica on the hardest difficulty, I feel pretty content. I was actually about to skip over Repaint Your Heart, the DLC where you can play it with Violet and Crow, mainly because I thought the main game's the story was great, pacing was kind of iffy, and the gameplay, while as much as I enjoyed it, I felt like it was overstaying as well come by the end of the game, especially with that last boss, no spoilers, I just... I, I, was, I was pretty good with not playing any more Persona 5 Tactica for a while, but after making the tier list and seeing some of your comments, I had to try out the two DLC characters. The thing about Repaint Your Heart DLC is that once you beat it, Violet and Crow will join your party in any New Game Plus playthrough of the main story. While this is cool, I have some personal opinions about it that I'll go over later in the video, but for now, let's have a spoiler free talk about the Repaint Your Heart DLC and if it's worth playing. <laughs> The Repaint Your Heart DLC felt like a palette cleanser for me. While I was already kind of over the Persona 5 Tactica gameplay by the end of the main story, the DLC added in a minor mechanical change that fundamentally changed the way I looked at the Persona 5 Tactica combat system. For some of the maps, I had to approach the game completely differently using the same systems, and that's a very awesome thing because now you're getting a lot more bang for your buck, especially if you do enjoy the concepts of Persona 5 Tactica. And I personally enjoy strategy games, so it's right up my alley. The new minor mechanic takes a page out of Splatoon, where you are basically having a turf war with you versus your enemy in terms of trying to cover ground with blue paint, while the enemy is trying to cover ground with pink paint. You you can blow up barrels to put paint around that barrel. You can shoot the enemies and the enemies will splatter paint instead of blood into the areas around them. And the enemies when they attack you, shoot paint at you and the surrounding surface areas around your character. The paint themselves have a unique property to them. If you are standing on your own paint, your character gets increased resistance and cannot be knocked down when they are hit even when they are not in cover. And on the opposite end, if you are standing on the enemy's paint, you cannot attack and if they hit you, regardless of if you're under cover or not, it will be an automatic critical you're gonna get knocked down and the enemy is gonna get a once more these buffs and debuffs also apply to the enemy so if the enemy is standing on your blue paint tile you can instantly knock them down and get a once more on the opposite hand if they're standing on their paint it's much harder for you to deal damage to them so outside of the ways that you interact with the environment, the ways that you have to interact with your enemies are now more intentional. Now, it's not harder than the main game, I would say. It just takes a little bit of a different way of thinking, and that's something that I find really refreshing. Compared to the main game, the DLC is much faster paced in terms of story and missions as well. The inability to fuse personas and the lack of side missions during each mission makes it so that the game goes a lot faster and that you don't have to play as precise. And while you can't really customize your character's guns or even make your own personal personas, you do unlock a lot of personas at a steady rate, giving you the ability to customize a little bit, but it's much more limited than the main game. In terms of story and characters, I think this is where Persona 5 Royal fans are going to be eating real good if they play the Repaint Your Heart DLC. The story itself is not too crazy, especially if you played previous Persona games. The English voice work for this game is stellar. I actually enjoyed the performance quite a lot and really sells the emotions of the characters within the story. For Persona 5 Royal fans, you get to spend a lot more time with Sumire and Akechi. The self-contained story of Repaint Your Heart relates a lot to Sumire's character arc, which is a treat if you are a fan of that character and you were missing out on her when you were playing through something like Persona 5 Strikers, which I probably should start playing because I haven't played it yet. I, I bought it a long time ago and I was planning on playing it after beating Persona 5 Royal, but when I did and I read that a lot of the story editions in 5 Royal will not show up in Strikers, I lost the motivation to want to play Strikers. That does get rectified here, but too bad it's a day one DLC that costs $20. But outside of story, there are a couple things that you get as well. The first thing being, once you beat the DLC, you unlock challenge missions that include the entire cast. And they can be pretty challenging and tests your understanding of this battle system. So if you're a fan of the battle system, you're gonna love this challenge. Me personally, I'm still making my way through it. And you get to play as and unlock Violet and Crow, both of them being very, very strong. The big issue I have with this DLC outside of it being day one and costing a lot of money is that this story is a prequel story. So by playing through the DLC, it sets you right up for the actual game. So you should play the DLC first. Now, you don't want to do that because they don't teach you a lot about the game like they do in the main story. And even if you did play this first, you'll have to get to New Game Plus to unlock Violet and Crow in your main game, which I think is a major mistake. If they really wanted this prequel story to be worthwhile and make it so people enjoy their experience, they really should have made Violet and Crow playable as soon as you beat the DLC when you start up a new save file or something in Persona 5 Tactica for the main story. Does anyone else think that that should be the case or do you think it's fine as is? Let us know in the comments below and if you're having a good time, 
hit that like button and consider subscribing for more JRPG content like this. Thanks. With that said, I can understand why they would put this DLC as a New Game Plus unlock. They probably want you to play a bit of the main story first before touching this because the game can be a bit harder if you don't know what you're doing. But once you understand the mechanics of the game, it becomes a bit easier. That said, I personally feel like it was a big missed opportunity because I already beat the game on Merciless Mode. And I thought it was easy. So the only reason why I would play the Persona 5 Tactica story again is if I really liked the game, I wanted to unlock some achievements, or I wanted to play around with Pro and Violet and see how powerful they are. And I already know how powerful they are. I, I don't have a definitive vision on how strong they actually are because in the DLC, you don't get to craft guns yourself and they will probably be stronger with the right personas. For example, Crow does not have the best range with his gun, but if you put in the range plus two persona passive, he's gonna be a monster. But just with that base kit alone, with Crow being able to dance all of your units, giving everybody an extra turn with his voltage skill, to Sumire having the ability to pee her pants and just put blue goop under her at the end of every turn, giving her resistances no matter where she stands. And this is further augmented by the fact that enemies in the normal game can't put pink paint down. So she literally can walk around and not have cover and do anything she wants. Her gun range is also extremely good. Again, with the main story, maybe she gets to craft an even longer range gun or a gun that could do multi-target. Something crazy like that, I'll find out soon enough. Just based off of their movement, their abilities, and their potential, I feel comfortable putting them in high S tier, probably S plus with the right persona setups, but I don't want to give you all anything definitive yet since I haven't played through New Game Plus with the characters. Overall, I think Persona 5 Royal fans should play Repaint Your Heart DLC. And I also think that if you enjoy Persona 5 Tactica's gameplay, don't skip out on Repaint Your Heart DLC like I was about to. It's definitely worth your time, it's a lot more fast paced and can be a bit of fun because of the painting mechanic. And then you get a nice challenge mode to top it off just to flex your Persona 5 Tactica skills. Outside of Violet and Crow fans or Persona 5 Tactica gameplay enjoyers, I would definitely wait for a sale for this DLC because $20 is a bit steep for what you get here. I think you can go through the whole story in like 3 to 4 hours depending on the difficulty mode. And throughout the entire runtime, you're probably going to be enjoying all of the gameplay that is offered to you and the story and the characters. I can't say the same for the Persona 5 Tactica main story, so that's a big big plus for the DLC. It's short, it's sweet, and it's a ton of fun. It's very engaging. With that said, Persona 5 Tactica Repaint Your Heart DLC enjoyers, what do you think? Let us know in the comments below because I'd love to hear it. If you're interested in more Persona 5 Tactica content, check out my tier list video link on screen right now. My name is Versana, and I'll see you in the next video.